Peter Orker, eh, welcome to Negocios en tu Mundo. Thank you very much indeed. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Okay, first of all, um, tell us about the Golden Circle. You have worked with Simon Sinek and his very important theory. Uh, yes, I've worked with Simon now probably about five or six years. And uh, we came together, we became friends. And um, he asked me, in a wonderful act of trust a few years ago, he asked me to help take his message around the world and the message of starting with why in the Golden Circle. And it was a wonderful act of trust because he'd never heard me speak before and he was entrusting me with his message. Um, and then what I do with Simon's message, I build on it and my focus is how to help companies and individuals take these ideas and use them in their business. So I, I'm like the how guy, if you like, to Simon's why, if that makes sense. Okay, please uh, tell us what the Golden Circle is. What the Golden Circle is? Yeah. Okay, the Golden Circle is um, a way of talking about every business, every individual operates on, on three levels. Okay? There's what it is we do, there's how we do it, and there's why we do it. So what we do, um, a journalist or interviewer, presenter, for example, everybody knows what they do. Some of us know how we do it. And in business, we call that our unique selling proposition, our intellectual property, what makes us special or different. But not many people know why it is they do what they do. And by why, we mean what's your cause? What's your purpose? What's your belief? It's not about money. That's a what. Making money is a what. And yeah, you have to do that. But the why is that higher purpose. It's the thing that gets you out of bed every day. And those organizations, those companies that engender a lot of trust and a lot of loyalty, they have learned how to think, act, and communicate, starting with why it is they do what they do. Not what, but why it is they do what they do, which is the completely opposite to most other people, because most of us, we start by talking about what it is we do and then how we do it. But the inspired companies, inspired leaders, they start with what it is they believe, what it is they stand for in this world, the contribution, the impact they make on other people. And that's what has people build trust and loyalty towards them. Peter, what is your favorite example to explain that? My favorite example, well, there's lots of examples. We often still use Apple, the computer company, because they are the biggest company in the, the world. Um, and they seem to have a lot of loyal followers. Um, yeah, but they're just a computer company. Yeah. Um, so if we were, if they were like any other computer company, they would give a, a marketing or a branding message that would go something like this. They'd start with what? They would say, we make great computers. They then go on to how, and they'd say, they're beautifully designed, wonderfully manufactured, and easy to use. Do you want to buy one? Yeah. Mm. You know, it's uninspiring, and that's how most marketing messages are done. It's how we communicate interpersonally as well. You know, we talk about what job we have and then how we do it, but that's where it tends to fade away. Apple, though, they communicate starting with their why. So their message, their marketing message goes something like this. They start with why. They say, everything we do, we believe in challenging the status quo. We believe in thinking differently. The way we challenge the status quo is that we make products that are beautifully designed, wonderfully manufactured, and easy to use. We just happen to make computers. It's completely different, yeah? But all we've done is reverse the order of the information, starting with why we do what we do rather than what. And if you're the sort of person who believes in what Apple believes, and you need what they have, then chances are you will buy from Apple if you can. Or more importantly, you'll stay loyal to Apple and loyalty is much more than buying a second time. You know, repeat buying just means you buy a product again. Loyalty is where you're willing to sacrifice in some way, sacrifice your time to sit outside the Apple store in line waiting for the latest phone or to pay a ridiculous price for their phones, yes? Um, but this is what Apple does. Now, if you don't believe what Apple believes, that's fine, they're not after you, yeah? Um, you, there are lots of other products that, that do that, but this is the key to Apple's long-term success. And there are lots of other companies out there as well, but Apple is, is still a good example.
What is the, the relationship between uh, the golden circle and the brain? Okay, so what makes the golden circle such a powerful idea is that it's, it's not opinion. Um, it's grounded, it's founded in biology, which goes beyond psychology. It's the biology of how our brains are wired. And if we take a cross-section of the human brain, it splits into two main parts, which fit perfectly onto that golden circle of the why, how, what. The first part of the brain is the neocortex, and that fits onto the what part of the golden circle. And the neocortex is responsible for understanding facts and figures and data and also language. But then we have the limbic part of the brain, the older part of the brain, and that fits onto the why and the how level of the golden circle. And the limbic part of the brain is responsible for feelings such as trust and loyalty. And those are feelings. You can't, they're not instructions, they're feelings. The limbic part of the brain is also responsible for all human behavior, all human decision making, but it's got no capacity for language. And this is why we often say, yes, I understand all the facts and figures, but it just doesn't feel right. And we make our decision based on how it feels. The reason we use that verb, to feel, is because the decision's been made by a limbic brain that's responsible for all decision making, but has got no capacity for language. And the best we can come up with is it doesn't feel right. Or we talk about making a gut decision or leading with our heart. It's actually the limbic brain which is deciding. We then justify it through facts and figures. Yeah, so this is what, what makes the golden circle so powerful. It is biological. It's how we're hardwired. And all that we do when we think, act, communicate, starting with why, is we work with the biology instead of in spite of it. Peter, how can people find their, their uh, why? Okay, so for the past six years or so, myself, um, Simon, and also our dear colleague David Mead, we've been traveling around the world helping individuals and companies discover their why because it's a discovery process. It's not created, it comes from your past, it's a discovery process. And we've put all of that information in a step-by-step -step guide in a book yeah. called Find Your Why. We like to keep it simple. So Find Your Why, and, and that came out in September. Um, it's available um, in English and in about 10 languages. It will shortly be translated into Spanish, I believe. Um, but you can find it on Amazon and wherever. So yeah. that will tell you, show you how to discover your own personal why and also to discover it for your team or your organization. Please, uh, three or four keys. Uh, three or four tips? In the book, yeah. Okay, so um, first of all, finding your why is a discovery process. Yeah. Um, and it's based on your stories. The times, if it's your own individual why, we have people think about the stories, the times in their life, specific moments in their life, which if they could repeat them, they would do it all again. Yeah? Um, and we ask people to come up with specific stories because it's those specific stories that triggers the emotions and the emotions are connected to the values that we feel. Yeah. And when you, you talk about these stories in our lives, we find a common thread that goes through them. And it's that common thread or the theme which then points us towards what our why is. And the why is a single sentence. So the starting point, if you want to discover your own why for yourself, is to sit down and think about stories of specific occasions in your life, your whole life, when uh, the times that you're particularly proud of or the times that had the most meaning for you. Write those down, and then the next tip is to find a partner, somebody who is willing to listen to you tell them these stories and to ask your, you questions to dig a bit deeper to understand more about that story. So get somebody to help you, okay? And the third thing is borrow or buy, but borrow a book. Um, there's an online course as well at Start With Why that we've put together, uh, so that will guide you through the process too. Finally, uh, what is uh, adaptive la leadership? What is leadership? Yeah. So, lots of definitions. Um, <laughs> you know, um, there's only one thing you need to be a leader, and that's a follower. You can have the, the greatest vision in the world, but if nobody's following you, you're not a leader. Okay, so a leader needs followers. But I have a, a, a distinction between management and leadership. 
management is about handling complexity. And we need to be able to do that in business. You know, life, business is very complex. So we need to manage complexity. But leadership is about creating simplicity. Simplicity shared in very simple language. If we think about all of the great leaders or businesses that we might admire in the past, in history, great leaders, what they were able to do is to put what they believe into very simple words that everyone can understand. And as the wonderful Leonardo da Vinci said, simplicity is the greatest sophistication. And that's what leadership's about, putting into simple words what it is you believe, what it is you stand for. Before you can stand out as an organization, you need to stand for something. So that's what leadership's about, creating that simplicity. And it starts with why. Peter, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Okay.